Okay, so in this presentation, we're going to have a look at symmetric key encryption. And we have a Jupyter notebook here to be able to implement our Python code. So symmetric key is quite simple. Basically, Bob and Alice have the same key. And hopefully Eve in the middle can actually discover what the key is so that she can decrypt the ciphertext. So we go from plain text to ciphertext and then plain text again. And we use the same secret key to be able to perform that operation. For most of the modes that we have, apart from uh, electronic codebook, we use what's called a salt value or also an initialization vector. This will allow us to be able to change the ciphertext, even though we have the same plain text and the same secret key. The main modes that we have, ECB, electronic codebook, CBC, Cypher blockchaining, CTR counter, OFB output feedback, and GCM Galois counter mode. Okay, so with a block cipher, we take our plain text data and we put it into message blocks. These are typically 64 bits or 128 bits long. Typically these days, these message blocks are 128 bits or 16 bytes. We then take our plain text and chop it up into these message blocks. At the very end, we'll have one of the message blocks which isn't quite full of all our plain text. So we add on a pad at the end. We then encrypt each of the message blocks with our secret key, our symmetric key, and also can add a salt value in there. And then each of these cipher blocks can be put together into creating one large cipher block. Okay, so on our first example here, we'll look at how we fill the blocks. Okay, so in this case, it's 128 bits or 16 bytes is our block size. And we're gonna create a block size of 16 in this case and then we have a message. So let's see that message there. And the code here will actually take each block at a time and we'll find out how many characters in this case are in each block. Remember each character is eight bits when we're using ASCII. Okay, so here we are here. We should find there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen characters in a block here. Okay. The standard method that we use for our block for our padding is what's called PKCS seven, and with this we fill the um, the last block with the number of bytes that are needed to fill the last last block. So if we have used five characters in the last blocks, five ASCII characters, then we will have 11 uh, padding bytes. The value of 11 is a, is a hexadecimal B. So we will see B, B, B 11 times for that. Okay, so let's try this one here. So our code is here. Here's our, our message. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five characters, and we have a block size of 128. And then we'll use this padding here to be able to pad for our block size. So in this case, we can see there's our five characters and we have 128 bit block size. So we will have an 11 or zero B padding there, padding that block. We can see the six one is an A in hexadecimal, six two is a B and so on. Okay, so for a message of a low with a block size of 128, what's the padding value? For this message here. So we'll just copy that message here and we'll give it a try. Okay. 
Okay, so then we run our Python code. And you can see here, the padding in this case is a zero E. We can see what's happened here is we've filled up one of the blocks and we then create another block and then we have this as our padding byte here. Okay, what will happen, uh, what will happen when we have 18 characters in the, the plain text? Will we have one block or two blocks and what will the padding value be? Okay, so let's try that out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so we've got 18. We can, can have 16 bytes in a block. So what we see here is that that's the first block. And then we go into the second block. And then we have a padding of 0E. 0E is a 14. So we have two uh, bytes left over that go into the next block. But all these bytes here will go into the first block. And then two here, two bytes here will go into the next block and we'll pad with 0E. Okay, so here's... Um, the most popular method of, uh, of symmetric encryption is AES encryption or advanced encryption standard. It uses a 128 bit block at 16 bytes and it can use 128, 192, and 256 bit encryption keys. Overall, we should try and use 256 bit encryption keys if, if we can. 192 bits is encryption keys are hardly ever used. The total number of keys that we can have for 128 is 2 to the power of 128. And for 256, it's 2 to the power of 256. In the most basic uh, mode for AES encryption, we can have what's called electronic codebook. With this, there is no salt value or initialization vector, and we take a message block and we encrypt each block on its own to create a cipher block and then we can chunk all the blocks together. So in this case we have uh, our ECB mode. Okay, so I've set it here, pass it in as a parameter and what we'll do is we'll generate a random 32 byte key. So that is 256 bit key. If we wanted, we could change this to 16 to make it 128. So we're adding in the padding here uh, onto our data to make sure that we can uh, pad for all the blocks. And then at the end, we've got to unpad them. So we'll just give this a little try. So with a message of hello123, what is the cipher? What is the ciphertext in hexadecimal? If you encrypt the same message, does it does it change? So we'll rerun this. Just okay. Hello, one, two, three. Give it a run, and we'll see what we get. Okay. So in this case, if we encrypt uh, the same message with the same key we will always get the same ciphertext. If we run the program again, we'll get a different ciphertext because it's generating a new key each time. But if we kept the same key, then we would get the same ciphertext. Uh, you can try that by copying and pasting those lines and then encrypting and decrypting again to see if you get the same uh, ciphertext. So there are several uh, modes that we can implement. One is called uh, cipher block chaining and with this we add an assault value or an initialization vector. Uh, we take a message block, encrypt and then we feed the output of that block into the next block and it squeezes over it with the message block and so on and so it will change through the whole of the, the program. Okay so this is uh, an example using these modes and where we're using a random salt value. So in this case, the random salt that we're using is a 
byte value, random number. And so that's 128 bits. We're still using a 256 bit key here. So again, uh, we're just doing the same again. We're padding the data, encrypting it, decrypting it, and then unpadding. That's the basic steps that we go through. And we just display that, uh, our cipher in hexadecimal here. Okay, so we'll give that a little run. So here we go on. And there is our data there. So what's the size of the initialization vector? Well, that's 128 bits. Size of the key, 256 bits. And for each run, do you get a different cipher for different input? And so that the answer to that will be yes, because we'll have a different salt value. So then we get stream ciphers, which are much more efficient and generally faster. With this, we take our secret key or our secret value and then add a salt value, which is a random seed, and that will create a, an inf pseudo infinitely long key stream. In fact, the key stream will be as long as our plain text. Then we take each bit at a time and we exclusive or them together. So a zero and a one gives us a one, a zero and a zero gives us a zero. Exclusive or zero, zero gives us zero, zero, one or one, zero gives us one, and one, one gives us zero, a bit like a little adder. So that gives us a cipher stream. And all we have to do on the other end is to be able to do the same operation in building the key stream and then XOR our cipher text with the key stream and we'll recover back the plain text. That's the way the exclusive OR gates actually work. Okay, so the most popular method of all is ChaCha20 and is, that's an alternative to AES. Okay, so the code in here is implementing our AES method. You can see here, this is one of the algorithms and we generate with the key and an initialization vector to be able to create our cipher here. Okay, so we'll just give that a little try and we should be able to decrypt there. That's the hexadecimal for our uh, plain text and you can see that's been recovered there. Okay, the size of the salt that we're using is 128 bits. The size of the key is 256 bits. And if you try these different ciphers, then you should see that the size of the cipher text will be exactly the same size as the plain text. So if we try uh, hello one, then Hopefully we should see that the plain text, the cipher text will increase in its size here. And if I add another character, you can see that is increasing too. So the number of bytes with a stream cipher in and the cipher is the same as the plain text uh, by size. Okay, because we're doing that bit exclusive or. One of the most popular methods for uh, AES encryption is GCM or GAWA uh, cipher mode. With this, we convert the block uh, cipher into a stream cipher. And we can also add in what's called additional data. And this will allow us to add in a session ID, port number, or something like that. So both Bob and Alice add in the same additional data and the same salt, and then can encrypt and decrypt. When Bob is sending, he must send the ciphertext and the salt value so that Alice can use that salt value uh, and the same shared key to be able to uh, decrypt uh, the, the ciphertext. This mode is called authenticated encryption with additional data. And it's the additional data that allows us to authenticate and map the encryption to a session or an, any associated data that we have. Okay, so here's the Python code that does that. Uh, this is, uh, we also generate what's called an authentication tag. So this is uh, called um, 
a message authentication code and it allows us to be able to make sure that the data bits have not been changed in the ciphertext. So the tag will go along with the encryption and will authenticate the cipher itself. Okay, so this is just our, we're decrypting with our tag and then and we're uh, decrypting and checking the tag. Okay, so the code should be there and hopefully we can run that. It should run okay. We can see there we can decrypt them. But if any of the bits are flipped in the ciphertext, then we'll create an exception because the tag will not uh, tie up. So we should, yep, okay. So the cipher is there. And if you want in your program, you can print out the tag. This is the additional data that we're actually adding to the data. Okay, and then there's many other uh, symmetric key methods such as uh, Cam Camilla, 3, Des, Idea, Cast, 5, and Blowfish. So this is the code here that allows you to be able to run uh, many of these modes here. Uh, most of them will, will require some salt value to be able to run. Okay, so to be able to crack a symmetric key with brute force, uh, if, we, if we have x bits, then we have two to the power of x different keys, and the time, the total time it would take to crack uh, our encryption will be two to the power of x times t, and t is the amount of time that it takes to try a single key. So in this case, we're going to try uh, 32 bits. Total number of keys will be this. And let's say it's one nanosecond to be able to try each key. So this will calculate the, the t average time, which will be the total time divided by two in seconds. And then we can convert that into hours here. So let's try, say, a 16-bit key and see what we get. And you can see here, then it's... Uh, 32 microseconds is the is the time if we increase that to 32 bits then we can see on average it will take 2.15 uh, seconds and this number of hours okay so this has been a, a quick uh, a python uh, jupyter notebook tutorial related to symmetric key encryption thanks <laughs>